these days I am frequently releasing videos. So therefore, I get less chance to engage with comments. That's actually bad, especially when you're sending question in comments. So when I miss that, I miss to answer your question. That's bad. So in case if I miss your question, make sure you share that in my Facebook page. I'll put the link below. And then I'm sure I'm certain that I get it and I, I'm certain that I can answer it. Okay, so today this video is based on few questions you asked. I'm like you guys ask uh, many questions about my Git workflow video and how to do this and how to do that and collective to answer all those questions I'm creating this video. Main two questions I found was one, how we can use branching strategy for uh, parallel releases. Parallel releases mean like let's say you have future A, B and C parallelly and then you need to release those like sequentially like for example you have feature A and B and C and then we develop this parallelly but we release as A, B, C. But then it's bad when you release the feature A, the feature B code and feature C code may go to production which is not tested and which is not confirmed. That's very bad. The second thing is how we can use in this branching strategy for tier based releases like for example you have a gold tier, you have a silver tier and you have a bronze tier and then how you can distinguish features using this branching strategy. Do we need to uh, use uh, different feature branches for different tiers? That's bad. Then if you fix a bug in the one branch, then you have to like just cherry pick that just that code to other branch without uh, cherry picking the features. Then that is again, it's like really troublesome and really hard work to do, really complicated. So in a Git, there are three main flows you can use. One is uh, this feature branching strategy what we discussed. The second one is a Git flow. And the third one is a trunk based deployment and trunk based development. So what we are looking for is a trunk based development. So today in this video, we are going to talk about trunk based development, how we can use it, when to use it, and what are the problems also trunk based development can create. So stay tuned. Today we are going to talk about that. It will be very interesting. And also in uh, next week video, I'm going to practically show you how trunk based development deployment works, but there we are not going to talk about it. So stay tuned with this video. Most important question is, what is the problem with this feature branching strategy? Feature branching strategy is all good and there are no issues until you go to production. Because until you go to production, your entire team may be focused on one feature or at least to one goal. So you have a predefined release cycle, predefined QA release cycle, UAT release cycle, so you can manage it, there are no issues. The one scenario is issue come on post-production. Why? Because after you go to production, there can be CRs, there can be some missing features and there can be bug fixes as well. So let's say you got A and B and C features and those features are you implementing parallelly. But the A feature is has a smaller development cycle and B feature has a long development cycle and so the C feature. So when you have these development parallelly, there is a very good chance these A, B and C features merge into the A features code and when the A feature release, those go to production. Other solution is keep this feature B and C branch open until feature A branch is released. That creates other problem because then the feature B and C branch codes are very outdated. So when you go to merge it, it creates a merge conflict and there's a high chance it will introduce low, more and more bugs. So that is the problem with the uh, feature based releases. Then the solution we are discussing in this video is a trunk based release. The main difference between feature based release and the trunk based release, feature based release branches are little stay longer, but trunk based release you can merge to your mainstream even daily or even hourly. There is no problem with that, right? So I'll go a little bit in detail, but in simple how you do is you tag your features this feature under this tag this is this feature and then when you release it to production you check out or you remove the features from deploying or being executing which is not tested for example in our case let's say you have feature a and b and c right so you create a feature tags feature a feature b and feature c so then you write your code under that tag it's kind of a if else statement right if the feature a is enabled you uh, execute this code or you can go other way around that means you maintain unreleased or uncompleted feature list so, so when the code execution if that feature if the particular code is belongs to unreleased feature then it won't execute that code and then it will skip it 
So when you're ready to release, you remove the your feature from the unreleased feature list, then your code is going to execute. So it's kind of a simple if that is if a statement, but I get that and then your code will cluttered with the feature which is not the logic code which is the release based code which is again bad because it's kind of a, a deployment code in your logic code so there are solutions for that we can discuss those later but to understand that how, how simple it is if, the, if it is released it works if it is not released it not work and then you can toggle these features well so now we have feature a and b and c in your code base you have a b c all features code but the moment you release this, you are saying don't release B and C, only release A. So that can have a three set of like you have a compile time feature flag, you can have a startup time feature flag, or also you can have a runtime feature flag. That means the code is down the already in the production, but those codes are not being executed. So there are certain security concerns we need to worry about, like if the if your code is not properly sanitized, and then those uh, stain those codes in the production how good it is it, it depends on case by case so we are going to discuss the uh, how we can do it and what are the options we have When you do frequent mergers to your mainstream branch or else your base branch, the one benefit is you can do frequent code reviews. So that means you, the review portion is very small. So in that case, you can go for a deep review and you can make sure you are not missing anything. Otherwise, when you review like a 30, 40, 50 file differences or 50 file changes in the one code review, there may be a chance to miss something during your code review. So that can eliminate. That is not the, by the way, objective. So as I said, one way of doing this is using if condition. But the problem when you use if condition, without knowing with the time goes, we create a very complex if condition structure. That means like if feature A enable and if feature B enable and if feature C enable do this. So that like is bad for your code because it's really hard to understand. It also, when the code evolves, you have a huge if condition structures everywhere in your code and your code get cluttered. So that's bad. And also when you have this triangle type of uh, if 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 nested if we call is as a triangle of doom all or we call as a toggle hell so why we call as a toggle hell because in the trunk based development or trunk based deployment we use something called feature toggles so the feature toggle is the where you can turn off or turn on your feature so if, if condition shouldn't use then what to use so we can use something like a decorators annotations and stuff like that and also we can use feature, feature labels and i'll show you how practically do this in the two different videos one is for java based application and one is for non java based or else a java script based application how we can really practically use this feature toggle and when we enable or disable that how those works and there are a few things we should not do using feature toggles or or else a trunk based development so one is using just a text file to enable or disable features that is bad because then your features at like your if text file is updated wrong or like if text file is not tracked then your features is go haywire where you will not be able to track it down and the second thing is you should not reuse uh, any feature labels again and again maybe feature that feature you label used in 10 years or 20 years ago but you shouldn't use it find something something new where you can uh, uh, label your feature another thing is i personally recommend use the feature toggles or feature labels in a negative way so that means you just tell you just mark what are the features should not release in that case the benefit is then uh, you are maintaining only under development features otherwise what will happen is with the time being you will have hundreds of thousands of feature list in your feature but it's not a big deal because it is like something like it, it stays in a configuration file or you don't like do anything with it and then it is one side it is benefit then we can like kind of have a kind of a, a metadata list to see what are the features you release but it depends on how you prefer but 
uh, that, that's a pros and cons on either way. And there's a one most important thing when we talk about the, this feature toggle or a trunk based development as well. So if you Google the night story, and I'll put the link even uh, down below, just because of they use this feature toggle in the wrong way, that's a very key reason this entire company went down within a 45 minutes. So that is kind of a, one of the main disaster ever happened in the software industry because this company went down within 45 minutes just because of they uh, used the feature toggles or else as uh, this uh, configuration in wrong way. So don't do it. But you shouldn't have to be scared to do it. That just because of someone did it wrong doesn't mean you do it wrong. But what most important thing is just because of you saw this video, just because of you, you heard something like this, don't jump into it and don't touch your production code with it. So do some experimental project and I'm going to do sample two projects in the next upcoming videos. And then after that, you go and touch your production code because otherwise, because most important thing is you have to have a hundred percent good understanding about this uh, trunk based development. Otherwise, that can bite you back as usual. Because here's the thing, any nothing in the world, nothing in the, at least in this software engineering industry is all good. Every technique, every every concept has some sort of an issue. So trunk based development also known as this feature flag or feature toggle is not all good. It has its own problem and its own mistakes. So that can lead, lead for catastrophic failures if you're not paying enough attention on that. So be careful. I have some good news to tell you. Usually I record these videos uh, on weekends so then I can like edit and uh, upload every other day. So I was about to tell you I may not be able to upload some videos on coming week because we had a planned release uh, on this weekend. But release got cancelled. So release got pushed back for like other two weeks. So that means I have my weekend. That means I can do videos for next week, next week as well. Anyway, so now time is 4.40. I'm on my way back home. I closed my day a little early today. But when I'm at office, I realized one part I miss in the video. That means I told you don't use if condition, but I didn't tell you then what to use, right? If I'm saying don't use the if condition, then there has to be a solution, right? What to use if not if condition. You need to use language features. For Java, there are uh, special libraries for Spring Boot and then uh, for Node.js or Node.js based uh, languages, we have different libraries, NPM libraries. You can use those type of libraries to enable and disable these feature toggles. And if, more than that, if you're using a DI, dependent injection, so it's better to use that because in that way, you can completely get rid of these features and you can stop this code being cluttered, right? Because otherwise, so when you have a bunch of feature flags, the code get cluttered eventually. Because most developers, they are creating feature flags, but they're scared to remove the feature flags because they think okay if I remove it something will break right so they think uh, they are not trying to remove it so in that case eventually code get cluttered you can stop that being using language feature or DI framework I'm not going to go in deeper that because I promise you uh, probably in coming week I'm going to practically show you how you can do this trunk based uh, deploy development and deployment and how you can toggle these features so then I'll see you in the next video until then stay safe and take care